with your contribution, of course. Welcome to Arcane Suns. It's July 2nd, 2018. And we just wanted to share what we saw earlier on our bench call. Um, I had first seen a throne chair. And um, I didn't really see anybody in particular sitting on it. But what I did see was they got up, took their crown off their head, put it on the seat, and left. And um, what Michelle had gotten was that that it's an image issue as far as um, staying in our identity all the time. And that um, people have a sacred, secular mindset, meaning that we've created with this um, this idea of, you know, going to church on Sundays and then the rest of the days were, were off. And so I just sense that a lot of people think that, you know, that when we ascend into heaven, when we're, when we, that the encounters are a one-time thing versus a, an image of ourselves and an identity of ourselves. And that we needed to be anchored and established in that position because I also saw an anchor um, that was that was necessary to keep us in that mindset, which would prevent us from being swayed back and forth with the winds. So that's what um, Michelle. Did you want to share? Add to that. Yeah, I was just going to, uh, obviously, we're looking to get feedback from you as to, you know, from all of you as to whether you identify with this. But we were just recognizing that um, uh, a desire to repent and come out of agreement with that mindset that we've grown into of because of going to the meeting place or going to church and then you know, the church meeting on a Wednesday or on a Sunday or whatever, and then uh, having this compartmentalized viewpoint. And so therefore, uh, it's the sacred, sacred, secular mentality and that we have, have really been given the mind of Christ, which is not that way because the Hebrew life is, 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 is all-inclusive. The Hebrew way of thinking doesn't separate any part of life from God and from our identity. So um, I, I don't know if any of you bear witness with that or have a witness with that, and if you've been struggling in any way to, um, to appropriate or to keep that identity of who you truly are in heaven and the things that you've gained, to keep that in, in, the, in the day to day and actually uh, have it outworked in the day-to-day. -day. If, if any of you have a testimony on that or, um, you know, an agreement on that, we'd just like to hear what you, what you, um, how you feel. Um, I would like to say something. Well, considering for me, I probably would say, well, probably not quite as me, but, um, what I'm struggling with is um, just feeling like there's something wrong with going to church. Um, like, is it like an elitist, uh, elitist or idea that those people that are still going to church are not any closer to God than people that have pulled away or are doing harms. Because um, what I find is there's some, I don't know, this is just my way of thinking. I probably need to understand more. That's what I'm having difficulties with because I have a 16 year old daughter. And I'm thinking if I'm to pull it out of church and then she's gaining so much out of it, then what happens? Because she loves it and she gains a lot of 
inside from it. So I find myself, I have to go with her to church. I can't, I mean, I can't just leave her. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how best to put it. I don't know. But I think God loves us equally the same. Thank you, Terry. Um, yeah, this isn't actually about a comparison or um, a comparison of, of believers. It's more about a mindset that um, we saw. It's called the sacred secular mindset, which you could have if you were going to a church or not. It's just that because we, we grew up with a mentality that mm -hmm. when you go to church, then you'll do what is spiritual but when you're at your work or your gym or wherever else you are on the earth, you're, you're not thinking of who you truly are, your true identity, because we've developed this mindset that that's secular stuff, that God's not really in that. But, and so as we've engaged in heaven and begun to experience things about uh, encounters, um, family that's part of heaven, such as the seven spirits and the angels and so on. They're wonderful encounters, but there's been a bit of a, a what we were seeing was that there's a bit of a disconnect because we've still had a bit of a mindset that is not the Hebrew mindset, is not the way that God intended. Because if you think back to the Hebrews, God was involved in everything. He told them how to eat and, you know, he gave them he gave, it wasn't a rules in the sense of, you know, um, do's and don'ts. It was the expression of God being involved in every aspect of life. And so they didn't mm -hmm. have a sacred secular mentality. Oh, okay, I think I, get, I, I understand what you're saying, Michelle. And it just goes to, I guess, confirm what I was just telling my daughter because she just found a, a she's 16 she just found a job at mcdonald's and i was just telling her that whatever you do you have to do it as unto the lord the customers might not see you but god watches everything that you do so personally i feel how i how i behave everything I'm an ambassador. I represent Christ. So everywhere I go, I am a reading epistle read of my own man. Therefore, I should represent him well. So not necessarily that when you're in a church setting or whatever setting you are, that's where you only do things that seem sacred. I don't know if that makes any sense. Sure, that makes sense, um, Terry. And um, so, if so, does anyone else or have a witness about anything of a bit of a disconnect from what you're engaging in heaven and actually seeing it flow into every day? Well, I guess I'll let someone else speak. <laughs> I have felt that disconnect at times, um, going to work every day and working, you know, nine, 10, sometimes 11 hours and, and focusing on what I need to get done and staying so busy. And then um, at times just regrouping and, and trying to, even though I'm working, try to picture myself in his garden and talking to him while I'm doing all the multiple things that I have to do in a day, you know, so, you know, I've, I have felt that disconnect, not having enough time that I want. I'm, I would much rather be in the Lord's presence and ascending, you know, all day with him, but I have, you know, family and obligations, you know, job, you know, different things that pulls me away. It's like, so I don't know if that's what you're talking about, but if you're talking about a disconnect, yes, I have felt that because it's, it's like the world pulls you away, but you have to have an income, you have to work, you have to do family duties, and um, 
it's a conflict within myself at times. Yeah, but I'm thinking that the anchor, though, that you have is to be able to just step into the to your garden, um, which is where your identity is, to bring you back. So that's that's the that's the anchor, um, right. That the establishment that we're that we're talking about, right? And how to um, to be in both places at the same time. Um, while we're functioning on the day to day. Right. You know, I know Mike Parsons will talk about how he can pray in the spirit 24 seven. And I'm like, you know, to do that is like, wow, that's amazing. Really? Cause he's, you know, he teaches how to do exercises where you actually can have, you know, a conversation and also be praying in tongues silently at the same time you're, you're, you're talking, you know? Wow. So you can be doing both things at once. Um, he had an exercise where you're reading um, Psalms. What Psalms is that? Um, anyway. 23. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> While you're, and it's like you start with doing it for five minutes and then you, you do it, you pray in tongues. Um, out loud while you're reading something silently and then you reverse it where you're reading out loud and you're praying in tongues silently. So it's, um, yeah, I think, I think part of that anchor is practice. Most definitely. I'm going to have to find that. And I, I guess think- I can agree with what she's saying. Um, you know, with the business of life and just the kids. And definitely for me, it's, it's been hard to stay anchored on that because I'm trying to learn this new thing, and then they, this life, just there's definitely a pull. So it's kind of interesting if we if we recognize that we have the mind of Christ now, because that's the that's the, and I, I don't want to, but just for practical purposes, that's the Hebrew mindset, okay? Mm -hmm. And so with them, there was never a sense of what we're talking about now because I think we're actually expressing the very thing because we're basically saying, well, we love to be engaging with God, but we have all these other things to do. And so we've, we've had this separate mindset which doesn't, which, which the, the Hebrews also did all kinds of things. But it was so integrated in their relationship with God that it wasn't a sense of that they were feeling pulled away. And, and, and with Jacob, you see the example of, you know, the, the ladder and the angels ascending and descending all the time, you know. And then when Jesus comes and he says, you know, you're going to see the angels ascending and descending all, all, over, all, you know, all the time around my life. And then as he is, so are we. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So I think that there's what we were shown to this evening was um, something that the, the, the Lord wants to help us um, come out of agreement with so that it begin to then by coming into agreement with the, the flow um, of, the, of that u- united mindset that it, it would begin to flow through us more easily, that during whatever it is that we're doing, there'll be a flow of that, you know, I'm in heaven and on earth at the same time. It'll begin to flow more easily in conversation in the workplace and so on because we've come out of agreement with that separate mindset. Yeah, so Michelle, I think this is a good time to ascend and see what um, tools we can be given and, um, and see what else Holy Spirit wants to show us. What do you think? I, I agree. And um, so, I mean, I, I think that we can um, 
that we can, any who wants to agree, we can, we can have an agreement uh, in the court, just in a, a quick way, in an agreement about where we want to, um, about, what we, about what we perceive about this. I agree. Yes. I agree. Yes. Kath, why don't you lead us in? Okay, so thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for opening our eyes of understanding so we can operate in your ways. Just like Jacob with the ladder that always um, was seen, angels ascending and descending. So thank you for revealing to us what it is you want to show us tonight so that we can hit the perfect bullseye and move from glory to glory, increasing. And I believe that it is all of our desires. To stay in an ascended um, position throughout our day. As we do our daily activities family work, preparing meals, shopping, all those things, driving. So I was just shown um, time and how um, we're to operate outside of time. So maybe we might be, um, we need to um, disconnect from or what's the word um, from untether untether from the sun and the moon maybe for the uh, for time yes from serving time because time serves us It's like I saw like how often we all look at the time. <laughs> I know I look at the time a lot. Oh my gosh. 
because every time you like turn on your phone, then time pops up there. Hmm. And also for me, scheduling, I, I try to schedule everything and um, it's like try to control that time. Yeah. So it seems like there's um, that we're seeing to untether and then to tether. So if there's anyone else seeing something like that to untether from and tether that um, is part of what we were shown so far. Yes. I'm sensing like I was um, actually spinning with the trinity and and just um like a clock going around so tethering with and becoming one with the lord rather than being in this timeline linear Yeah, that's coming out of the Greek mindset, right? I was just thinking about um, Jesus, how he didn't really care. I'm, he probably cared, but was trying to make a point. But when Lazarus was dead for like three days or whatever, and they're like, he, he's been dead for so long. <laughs> but I don't even think he was even thinking in, in terms of time at all. It's kind of interesting. Yeah. I don't even think of that. Yeah, so are we ready to come out of agreement with serving time? <laughs> yeah, because I think that has a lot to do with immortality as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Being in a chrono rather than his timing, Cairo time. Mm -hmm. time. Yeah, that's good. Cairo versus chrono. Mm -hmm. Does everybody understand that? Is there any questions so far on what that means? Greek versus Hebrew or linear versus um, circular understanding? If somebody could just do a really brief summary of where you've been through so far i just joined you so i'm just not completely sure where you are
Okay, we've just, um, we earlier had a vision of um, someone in heaven had um, been on their seat of authority with their crown on, took their crown off and left their seat and put the, put the crown on their seat and left. And um, what we were being shown was how that um, there was a bit of a disconnect from what was happening in engaging in heaven to actually carrying it out in the day to day. Um, it was as if we left the crown and the throne in heaven and then carried on about our own business in the earth. And we were um, being shown how we had still operated in a sacred and secular mentality and the Greek mindset instead of the Hebrew mindset, which is inclusive of every everyday life, everything that um, that God is fully involved in every day and that in us being involved in every day, that would then begin to flow. So we were being led to see that we needed to, um, where we could see this happening in our lives, that we would come into agreement to repent and disengage from that Greek mindset and from the sacred secular mindset and and embrace the union of the mind of Christ that's been given to us. And we were also seeing that serving time was part of that uh, the 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 um, Greek mindset too, where um, we're not under time or the sun or the moon, but we are the the sun and the moon, and time serves us. Um, we don't serve time, so that we're out of time, and that's another place that we could come out of agreement with serving time and come into agreement with the unity of being outside of time. All of which we were looking at to see how that uh, Jesus said, you will see the Son of Man and you will see angels ascending and descending on the Son of Man, to show that this is what was the engagement that was happening consistently at all times, because there was times Jesus went away in, up into the mountain and there was other times that he was with all the people. And so in all of those, there was no separation. It was, it was all intricately part of his intimacy with God. And we want that mindset that we have that being given, the mind of Christ, to be um, established in us. And we want to disengage from anything that we were we was still engaged into that's hindered that. So we were looking to see if there was anything else along that line that we needed to disengage from. From heaven's perspective. Right. Okay. No, that's, that's helpful. Thank you. Yeah, great job, Michelle. I, what I just saw was um, like standing next to Jesus and he had a sash and he untied his sash and then wrapped it around us and tied it back. So it was like, like a, like a yoke. His, yeah. Right, his sash, he put it around our waist and around him. Oh, nice. Does anybody see more about that sash, the color, or um, any understanding of it?
Did anybody see it as a confirmation that we have um, the right to rule as kings? Yes. Yes, absolutely. And ruling with him. Since we are yoked. Well, shall we go in with our sashes in, into, into the court, into the mobile court together and taking our place as kings, shall we um, basically take back what was stolen? <laughs> where we have um, missed out on the, the flow of that, 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 that heavenly cycle um, because of, of a separating out and um, finding ourselves in a, a two, two different sort of places. And um, instead of in the flow of everyday life being as one with God, um, where it's been stressful, where we have, where we've, where we felt like we've had a wonderful time and encounter, but then all of a sudden something's happening and and the peace is gone or whatever it was, you know that this is going to change now because we're coming as a king to to take our place in the court and to um, make a decision to a, a to an, um, a decision to untangle and entangle <laughs> I think we should proceed Anyone else? I think we should do that. Yes. Is everyone ready to do that? Yes. Uh, is anyone not ready to do that? Well, we got some yeses in chats too, Michelle. Yes, I see that. Okay. Good. Okay, let's just go into the court. We just come to you, Father, the judge, and we enter into the court. Um, we acknowledge the cloud of witnesses. And we acknowledge the angels on assignment over our lives for the kingdom purposes of God to be established with us. Um, we're thankful for you, Yeshua, and for your blood that speaks on our behalf. And shall we just present our case? 
Yes. If um, if we um, as as we present it, uh, just put your voice to that. Um, whether you put your uh, whether you put your mute off or not, just put your loud voice to an agreement to the repentance, so that we're doing this together. Okay. Father, we recognize that we are a brand new kind of creation. We desire the encounters that we're experiencing in heaven and the reality that we actually are citizens of heaven to be our reality in the day and in the night and throughout the day and throughout the night. Father, we know that this is our inheritance. We want to possess it. Today, we have come to stand and repent and come out of agreement with a Greek mindset that caused us to be linear in our thinking and to serve time. We repent that we have given room to and allowed time to rule over us. Today we want to reverse that, Lord, and we come out of agreement with time serving, with us serving time. We repent for what that has how that has affected us since you never intended us the time that you never intended us to serve time. Yes. We want to agree with you, Father, on that. Yes, Lord. Today, Father, we recognize that we've also been influenced by a sacred secular mindset that has placed us in a spiritual place and a non-spiritual place. And instead of seeing the whole of life, Father, in a spiritual dimension, we have seen part of it in a spiritual dimension and part of it in a non-spiritual dimension. This has made it a cutoff point for us, which has made it difficult for the flow that we've had in the spiritual realm to continue to manifest and flow freely in the what we've called the other or natural or carnal or no, um, secular realm. Today, Father, we disagree anymore with that mindset. We repent for giving room to it. And we, um, we know that the mind of Christ is not a, mess, a, a mind of sacred and secular. We agree that we have the mind of Christ. Father, we repent yes, we and come out of agreement with these two things today before the court and the angels and the cloud of witnesses and before you, Yeshua. Today we are thankful that we are eternal beings and that we've understood that truth. So we possess that reality. Father, today we agree that we are the kings and time serves us. We take, our, we take our position there to, um, of authority over time. We also recognize that since we have the mind of Christ, we are no longer in agreement with any separation in day-to-day -day living. As we saw, Jacob went up and down, and Jacob's ladder, the angels went up and down on it, and Jesus saying, there'll be angels going up and down over my life all the time. As Jesus is, we recognize we are too. So we now agree that the angels of God are up and down over our lives all the time too. As we come out of agreement with these two wrong things, Father, we receive the power of the blood of Jesus to remove all the trading we've done that has caused us to be frustrated, that has caused us to um, forget who we are, <laughs> forget our authority, and so on. Um, all the trading we've done that we gave room to the enemy on to steal from us our peace, our joy, and our consistent place of union and communion with you. Today, we um, thank you, Jesus, for the blood that will remove out of the record of our DNA those iniquitous patterns. Today, 
We thank you that your blood cuts off every connection to the soul realm, mind, will, emotions, conscience, memory, imagination, subconscious, unconscious, and body. We just disentangle and or come, come free from, with your blood, Lord, all those un, ungodly plugins, all those ways that the the, um, the false, way, the, all those ways that those two iniquitous patterns were connected to us are cut off now through the power of your blood. We receive that freedom. And we tether the soul and the body and all the soul and body gates together with the spirit under the Holy Spirit to the mind of Christ and to our eternal being. Father, we take back what we lost. We take back what it's like to be able to engage in heaven together and then have the outworking of that flow well in all aspects of the day and night. Is everyone in agreement? Does anyone yeah. have anything yes. to add? Is anyone seeing what's happening, what's going on in the court? Is anyone seeing anything or discerning a response? I just saw we were in the courtroom and we were still yoked to Jesus with our sash with his sash around us. I think we, we've we repented for everything and he's just standing with us. Declared righteous, worthy. Thanks, Laura.
Well, I honestly, <laughs> I was seeing that the Lord, that Jesus wanted to have a feast with us, feast with us. Terry said she feels like he's redeeming the time. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Lord. I think we're also taking back the ability that we actually are created to be, and we were made to live in this dimension where it was a, a flow, a consistent flow. We were not made to live in separate boxes of thought. <laughs> so it's like the yoke, the false yoke is off and the and we and we fit so perfectly actually with the true flow. Was it, was it you, Laura, that said that we were like we were being yoked? Or was it you, Kathy? No, it was Laura. Well, I had said yoked with the with the blue sash around our waist, mm. but then I was seeing the blue sashes becoming uh, like mantles. And uh -huh. then um, when we sat down at the um, the table to dine with him, I saw the mat the the sash then become our our tablecloth. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. And I, I was seeing us dancing, and I don't know what it's called, but when you're dancing and um, it's like you're holding a sash up in the air, you know, it was like, um, I, I don't even know, I can, I'm seeing it, but I can't describe it. It's like going around in a circle together and our it, it's um like our sashes are linked in the center and we're going around yes and like weaving together and uh, knitting together yes I, I i don't know what that's called Definitely celebrating. Mm. Definitely celebrating the flow. I was also sensing that there's so much more ease that we now will go forward with so much more ease. It'll be easy to flow because we're actually made to flow that way. And I, I sensed a, a loud trumpet blast.
like the introduction. Like before kings would come in, there would be a trumpet blast introducing their arrival. And I just keep seeing the sash to me is like a light blue, like a pastel blue color. And I see it everywhere. Now I'm seeing it like as a banner with the, with the, um, the horn, like a, like it's hanging down off of it, the trumpet. Mm -hmm. So, Kathy, would that blue be like a spirit of might color? Yeah, that's what yeah. I was wondering what the um, color, which color, um, which of the seven spirits was represented by blue. What's well, the spirit of might, which um, is one of our bench angels, our bench spirits. Um, but I don't know if it's a like an indigo blue. I think um, what I was seeing, but it could be just what I was seeing was a, like a light pastel blue. I agree, Terry, that we'll be operating in rich time now. What did you all sense about the the um the blowing of the of the trumpet and the and um the purposes of it? I think Laura was saying that it's like, um, you know, what they do when a, when, a, when a king royalty enters, you know, the area, like, dun, da, da, da. <laughs> um, that's what I was, and then the fact about um, um, establishing our, our image as kings operating outside of time and living in rich time and the celebration. I just feel this, submit this. I, I don't always go right into tongues when we're engaging, but again, sometimes things like that'll happen. And I was saying something like Shagoda or something Mekadesh. And I looked up the Shah in Hebrew and it means um, immediately. So I'm wondering if like what Kathy and um, some of the others have submitted is like, this is an immediate, an immediate shift. And then I've been hanging on to this for the last couple of minutes, but oftentimes when I see the colors in pastel more, oftentimes it leads me to um, the purity of one of the seven spirits. And so when I was just thinking on the blue, I kept thinking of the purity 
are the refreshing of pure knowledge um, because, you know, might is usually associated with more indigo kind of blue. So I was just thinking of the refreshing of the pure knowledge, like heaven's knowledge, like we're letting go of the secular ways of thinking. Yes, that's good, because I had also thought that that was the spirit of knowledge earlier. And again, you know, the immediate shift of the immediate shift of he's the one that makes us holy, the immediate shift of like the pure ways, the pure knowledge, the, the pureness of his practicality in a sense, which is the opposite of what we know here on the earth, pretty much. So let's embrace the spirit of knowledge. So spirit of knowledge, we agree with you and we embrace you and we embrace your, your function and purpose for us. to reveal the knowledge to us, to reveal knowledge as it is in heaven and to receive being engaged with all knowledge that comes out of heaven for everyday life, for everything. Amen. 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 I just sense such a peace and uh, rightness, like um, everything fits properly now. <laughs>
Yep, I think that that's great. It's great, wonderful. Necessary. How does everybody else feel? Yeah, I feel it's the Lord's pleasure to free us today mm -hmm. and that there's, there's a lot of um, result that we're going to see uh, from, what we've, from what we've engaged today. And uh, he's happy for us to be truly free. And I'm happy too. <laughs> yeah, me too. How does everybody else feel? Oh, yes. It's just a bit of peace. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm feeling quite tickled because the seven spirits have been coming up a lot. But I, if I were to, I just haven't had much encounter as of late with the spirit of knowledge, you know, I've kind of been in the backdrop. And I, I was thinking like engaging, at least for me, the spirit of knowledge, it's like everything's culminating, coming together. And I was thinking how often we hear that quote, knowledge is power. But like really in heaven, you know, heaven's knowledge is real power. And also glory um, as far as the seven and matings go along with knowledge, spirit of knowledge. Yeah, so if his glory is falling upon all flesh and the knowledge, right? The knowledge and the glory. Everybody feel complete. Yes, after everyone was dancing, I, I felt like there were thrones for all of us to sit on. So our celebration is finished. Yes, yeah, sit on and never get up from. <laughs> and always yeah, keep our so crowns on. <laughs> yeah, so shall we just sit on our thrones yeah, right, right now? We'll have and our some, crowns on our head and yeah. Glue on our behinds. <laughs> yeah. Remember yeah. remember that. Yeah, remember this. These thrones that we have on mobile. It's True. it's it's the it's the um what's it called? The macabres. Yeah. It's the expression of uh, Ezekiel's expression of what the mobile throne looks like is these thrones are are mobile yeah absolutely yeah we're not so stuck. we never we never are not kings right you know at any moment we are never not kings <laughs> um i know we're going there but i i didn't say it but i did see when we were engaging knowledge i saw um knowledge pull out of a sash <laughs> the blue stones and they were all rounded so i was like oh that's weird because i'm so used to seeing like gems or you know things like that and um you know a little more maybe jagged or you know sharper edges but they were like really smooth gems or stones of blue so um, i just for whatever reason i didn't think to say that Were these stones for our crown? Actually, that's what I had just thought before I shared that. When we were talking about the throne, I'm like, we should put that in the center of our crown right now. We can 
turn it or do whatever we want with it. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. So it's like knowledge is crowning us. <laughs> yeah. I just saw like putting the crown, like the round stone in the crown, but all of a sudden the crowns like shifted to like this gorgeous sapphire stone. It was like the whole crown was like this sapphire, beautiful, reflective color, light. I sense that the blue stone was a sapphire too. So that resonated with me. Okay, cool. I have been thinking about that sapphire necklace. I don't remember, like, I, I don't know who was on the ascension with me, but there was one a while back where um, I received a, a sapphire necklace for, I guess you could say for, for people who are of your average church mentality, where they don't really understand um, seeing in heaven or engaging heaven or knowing what it's like to receive the life of heaven, really. They just sort of have um, traditional church mindsets and, and community and more, more I, 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 I'm not sure who was with me on that, but it's sort of related to the Titanic. Um, in the movie, the Titanic, the old woman who was telling the story had that, that sapphire necklace and it was recovered from the depths. And so that's where sort of the sapphire necklace comes from. And I've, I've been thinking about that sapphire necklace a fair bit lately with um, my parents who really don't understand uh, the mentality of being able to engage the life of heaven or be a spiritual kind of believer, even though they really are just deeply devoted to Jesus in, in your sort of typical church, mm, traditional more kind of ways, so. I was just reading about the um, spirit of knowledge and sure does tie into um, tonight's reminder. Do you want to share it? Sure, it says um, it teaches us how to access the knowledge of God and how to apply that knowledge in a natural environment out of the spirit world. It teaches us to be aware of the places of rulership of the sons of God and what to do with what we have, what we know out of heaven. It will teach us, it will teach you to zip your lip a lot of times about things you see. It enables us to gain access to the knowledge of God about the supernatural realms, the supernatural heaven, about heaven, about creation, and how to operate in the functions in the realm of heaven in and around your life. Not only does it reveal, but it teaches how to retain what we see, how to process it, how to store it, and how to become like what we see that remains in our lives. It teaches us how to meditate and receive divine insight into circumstances and to bring divine order into chaos and to bring God's rule to bear on the earth. It empowers us for position and its color is indigo. Where did you get that? I would say that sums it right up. <laughs> I don't know. I've had this forever. I think it came from Ian Clayton's um, website or something. Or I don't know. That's where so I got good. It. Isn't it perfect? That, mm, that's so good, Kathy. Um, is there a way that it can be um, 
I can put it on Arcing Suns. So uh, fantastic. Please do. Okay. Alrighty. That was actually wonderful. Yeah, thank it's you. It's amazing how having gone into the court and repented what we were given back. We were given back the spirit of knowledge and all that that entails. It's so perfect. So I just put on there all the seven spirits, what they each represent. So you can scroll down to um, the spirit of knowledge. So I think it'll be a, a good reminder to us to stay anchored and established in our image. Yeah, and recognizing uh, what we were shown, um, how we it was present, how we were presented as kings, and that the Lord chose to make us see that we were kings, and that we're always kings because that was what you saw in the beginning, Kathy, was that someone took their crown off and le left their throne and put their crown on top of the uh, throne and, and went away to do their natural stuff. <laughs> and so we see how Jesus just gave us the, the sash, the blue sash, and then uh, when we walked into the courts, we walked in as kings. Then at the end of the session, we walked into the throne, onto our throne again with a crown again with <laughs> spirit of knowledge being given. I think I think that that woman who left her crown and her throne and went to do her natural life, I think that was actually, I mean, I'm sure it's not only me, but I think it's certainly something that applies to me quite definitely. I just, I, I guess in a sense, I've gotten into older mindsets of, um, almost church age type minds, people who are used to spiritual warfare type mindsets where they're not familiar with their inheritance in Christ very much. And so they end up kind of doing a lot of trying to fix it themselves kind of stuff. So that's interesting that you bring that up because I think that's probably something that I can see as if I, I, I think, if I perspective into just being more alert to the intimacy with Jesus and to to be more intentional, it really reminds that phrase about you do not have. Well, does everybody feel complete? Yes. Yes. Well, we're really thankful for this awesome opportunity to be adjusted <laughs> and to be set free and for engaging knowledge. And we just honor you, Lord, and we thank you so much for always being so faithful to us to show us what you have for us and what you want us to um, receive from you today. We just thank you so much, Lord. We just hide it in, the, in our hearts. We take it into the garden of our hearts. Amen. Amen. Thank you.